Hey there, Fallout 4, Patch 1.5, and the Creation Kit. They're finally here. What's the, what's the big deal about the Creation Kit? Well, the Creation Kit allows people to create mods for Fallout 4. Now, there have been mods for Fallout 4 before the Creation Kit came out. They were created using Fallout Edit, and they were hosted on... Um, the Fallout 4 Nexus and the Nexus community is one of the largest modding communities in the world they mod the Witcher games they mod the Elder Scrolls games and a variety of others they're they're one of the biggest most plurif no most um they're one of the biggest modding communities in the world essentially and the contributors to Bethesda's um mod library on Bethesda net come from Nexus All right so I want to show you how you install mods one important thing the mods on the consoles unlike the PC side will be vetted meaning that um, because of copyright concerns because no one stands up for fair use anymore because of copyright concerns certain mods may not be allowed uh, these nude CBB CBBE mod which replaces the female uh, model might not be allowed the there is a version with clothing with underclothes that one might be allowed uh, the um, ENBs which get into the game engine and muck with the shaders that likely won't be allowed because that in installs custom direct 3d dlls and the ps4 version doesn't use direct 3d and i know microsoft does not want someone installing their own direct 3d dlls onto the xbox one so you like will will never see an enb uh, there that mucks mucks around with shaders on the uh Xbox one so let me show you how you install a mod using Bethesda's system for Bethesda net you'll notice on the menu that there's a few new there's a couple of new additions there's add-ons this is for DLC it shows what you have installed I've got the automatron and the uh, the new horse armor. Yeah, it this should have been released as free. There's n not enough here to constitute the four dollar price tag. I got it anyway because it adds some interesting stuff, and I used it. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Far Harbor. Uh, I am really anticipating this. It looks like it may be, um, you know, it may be Port Lookout um, 2.0 because Fallout 3's Port Lookout was really, really good. That was an incredibly good DLC. It was creepy. So, I'm hoping it's something like this. I understand there's going to be more DLC than this after this. It's also going to be pretty large. Alright, on to mods. Now, when you go into this menu, you will be prompted to log in. I'm, I already have a login. And I already have a couple of mods installed. Now, most of my mods come from the Nexus. So, I'm using Nexus Mod Manager instead of uh, this but I've got a couple of them installed here because the Nexus mod manager version doesn't seem to be working for some reason so I've got the atomic radio which it's this is a lore friendly radio station they have 30 voice actors that do PSAs and ads and DJs and with lore friendly music and it is it, it, it's great I mean, it's a great addition to the game, and it's all lore-friendly. It's all music from the 40s and 50s, and all the ads sound like stuff from old-time radio. I mean, it, they did an incredible job with it. Uh, quick, quick enter and exit of your power armor. I had the Nexus version installed. For some reason, it wasn't working. 
or it wasn't working for getting into your armor, but getting out of it, it was fast. So let's install another one to show you just what it's like to install one of these. Now, the one problem I've been having is I've been wanting to try and fix the bridge going into Sanctuary Hills. But the line where you can where you can build and can't build ends right there. And I've been wanting to fix that spot where the bridge is broken in, but I can't. So I'm going to install a mod that fixes it. So let's install this mod and see what happens. Boom. That's it. That's the mod installed. Alright. Now when you exit out. And you don't have to worry about the load order here. You see, uh, when you hit T, you can do the load order. That's important for mods. Uh, some mods have to be started before others do, because some of them might step on one another, depending on what they are. Uh, in this instance, I don't have anything that will step on one another, that will override one another. So I don't have to worry too much about load order here. So let's back out. Uh, it says the load order has changed. The game's going to start because a new mod has been added. Rarely it crashes here, but it shouldn't. Um, if you have a lot of mods installed, it will. Okay, it did not. Now let's load up a game. And uh, fast terminal displays. Oh. Uh, yeah, for some reason it keeps disabling that one in Nexus. I'm going to have to re-enable that one later. Quirks. And the game is loading. Loading, loading, loading. The initial startup is takes a while because of all the mods. Come on. You can load. Load. Loading. Let's go take a look at the bridge. And by the way, I am running this game on high settings. Actually, ultra settings, really. And all this fog is a mod. I've got a uh, weather mod installed. And my bridge is fixed. Yay! No more screwed up bridge. So, that was how you install mods in Fallout 4 using Bethesda's own system. That's how you're going to do it on the PS4 and Xbox One. So, because you don't have access to uh, Nexus mods on those consoles. Uh, Wish you did, because there's a lot of mods out there, but since those mods are going to be vetted, and since certain ones will be allowed and certain ones won't be allowed, uh, yeah. It is what it is. It's the only way they would, uh, it's the only way they would allow it on, uh, on the consoles. Is if certain ones were allowed and certain ones weren't. Alright. That's how you install the mods. And I'll show you a little more of Fallout 4 some other time. Maybe I'll show you how you install mods through Nexus Mod Manager. Um, that may be a subject for another video. So, thanks for watching. And I... 
We'll see you next time.